PlayStation Project Q finally has a name, and it's it's the PlayStation Portal. So this is the next not really PlayStation handheld device. It is instead PlayStation's first remote play dedicated device. That's right. This is not a PSP 2 or, or 3 or a Vita 2000. This is an abomination. It's a little tablet with two, two halves of a DualSense controller welded onto the middle. This can't play games on its own. You need a Wi-Fi connection in a PS5 to to remote play over. Uh, you can't even stream games through the cloud. It's just a display, a TV, that only works with your PlayStation. Isn't this something that Magnavox... Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is this is something that Magnavox was actually kind of scared of, that they thought people would assume that the Magnavox Odyssey would only work on Magnavox TVs. But this is what Sony is actually doing right now. $200, $200 to be able to, to look at your PlayStation when you're not at your PlayStation. 8-inch LCD screen, 1080p resolution at 60 frames per second. I, I think they mean Hertz. Has the battery life of a standard DualSense controller. That's not too bad, but this is a pointless device built for nobody. Something that does kind of piss me off is the fact that this, this thing doesn't support Bluetooth. Like, I know that that probably isn't a huge deal to some people, but that means any wireless headset you have doesn't work with this thing. Unless, unless it's it's the new Sony's, new Sony PlayStation headset, the proprietary headphones that they're selling now. Oh, and look at that. Sony has acquired a new high-end headphone maker to boost the PlayStation. This is their plan. Just make a new proprietary wireless audio technology to sell more headphones. That's great. Absolutely great. Does anybody actually plan on buying these headphones just to work specifically with the PlayStation device? Sony, you're not Apple. You're not even Nintendo. In fact, this is everything wrong with the modern console industry. It rubs me the wrong way. Not in the right way. Of course, many people are drawing comparisons between this and the Steam Deck. You know, the all-in-one portable PC gaming machine for $3.99. Okay, so it's not really $399, you know, if you if you want the fancy stuff, you get you gotta pay a little bit more. It's a little bit more pricey than the PlayStation, but it can play the games locally. That's a big deal. It can actually play games on its own. That's a that's a big deal. Couldn't you just install Windows and you could have Yeah. So on a lot of these new handhelds, you can actually just use PlayStation Now the cloud streaming service for the PlayStation. Something that the PlayStation handheld cannot do. <laughs> so I know Sony started testing out this new cloud streaming service, I think a successor to PlayStation Now. I don't know if that's rolled out yet. Oh, that seems, it seems to be rolling out right now, actually. <laughs> Then why, then why does this not support it? You know what it probably is? It's probably because they don't want people to be able to play like Spider-Man 2 on a $200 handheld device. They don't want people to just, they don't want people to be able to, who want to play this new game to just go out and buy a $200 PlayStation thing. They, no, they want them to go buy the whole $400 PlayStation. $500, because it got the little disk drive. Okay, let's think about potential use cases for this machine. If you're an adult, you're not going to need this. What bothers me a lot about this is that this technology exists already. Seriously, I can just I'm on a Windows right now. I can uh, I can go to and go to the Xbox app right here, boot it up. I can click this button. I can press Xbox console on on my laptop and uh, and I'm and I'm 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 at, I'm at my Xbox. I'm at, at it already. That's all it took. No $200 device required. You could do this on uh with Xbox on phones, with the Xbox Cloud app thingy, right? Like seriously, you could you could just buy the the Razer phone controller <laughs> and play on the Xbox Cloud on Stadia. You can use PlayStation Remote Play already, right? You can already use PlayStation Remote Play on any mobile device or a good chunk of them. So, um. Are you actually paying just $200 for the DualSense features specifically? But you could just pair a DualSense to your phone, right? So what's the point of this? It's at a point where cloud streaming, the bane of my existence, is a better alternative to what they're putting out here. The fact you can't use cloud streaming is one of the major issues here. <laughs> so who's it for? 
Who is this for? I guess if you're like a kid and your dad's watching his his Thursday night football on the TV and you just can't wait to play your Ratchet and Clank, then I guess this would make sense. You can go to your room and deal with the terrible latency of being far away from your router, but you're still getting to play the game. I've seen some people compare this to the Wii U gamepad, but to be completely honest, uh, it's not really the same thing. Like, the Wii U gamepad was kind of actually special because it didn't require Wi-Fi to work. There really wasn't any concern about latency. In fact, I believe that there was less latency going to the controller than there was going through the HDMI display. Now, from what I've heard, this thing doesn't actually have all that much latency, but I can't imagine it's amazing, and I definitely cannot imagine it's anywhere close to that original Wii U. Design-wise, it's actually kind of a shame because this is probably one of the most, maybe not visually appealing, but probably ergonomically appealing handheld devices I've ever seen. Wait, what was that? Is that an LED? Is that an LED lights right there? Hmm, that might change everything. I might have to buy this now. But if you're an adult, if you have disposable income, I think just about everything is a better is a better option here. Like I'll give you this, something like the ROG Ally that, that runs Windows, that has, it's the Xbox portable more or less. It's a little pricey. Like that, that's a, that's a bit much. Now see back in my day, if we wanted to play our PlayStations on the go. We would we'd get our Sony portable DVD players and uh they looked a little bit better than they actually they looked about identical to only $34. Good working condition. And see what we do, we take these AV splitters right here and we just jam them right in there and you could play your Tony Hawk Pro Skater on the go. Now, I've heard some people say maybe they should make a new PlayStation Portable altogether. Like a whole new handheld, whole new ecosystem to live alongside the, the PS5. That was never going to happen. <laughs> that was never going to happen. So one of the major issues with having two development platforms is you have to divide your attention. When it came to something like the PlayStation Vita, Sony had to take some of its in-house development studios and put them on these mobile projects. Games that would probably not sell that many units, but needed to be there to sell systems. Now, Sony's first party lineup of studios has definitely grown since this time, but by no means would they have the capabilities to support this. I mean, Nintendo didn't even. That's why they moved from the Wii U in the 3DS to the Switch. You were never going to get a PlayStation Portable 3 or a PS Vita 2. The sales numbers just weren't there. So by best estimates, the Vita sold 15, maybe 16 million units. This is in comparison to the 3DS that sold 75 million units, almost 76. I've heard some people say maybe they should make a PlayStation 4 Portable. Just take the PS4 itself and, uh, I don't know, <laughs> shrink it down to handheld size. But I don't think that's a great idea either. It would probably be weaker than whatever the Switch 2 would offer. But also, I don't know if Sony necessarily has those exact architectures and uh, chip processes still in production. That's a, that's, it's a complicated thing. I'm also certain Sony doesn't want to incentivize developers to continue working on last-gen platforms. And of course, uh, some people have suggested why not make a retro PlayStation portable? Something that plays PS1 and PS2 games and maybe streams PS3 titles through the cloud. But I mean, this this is Jim Ryan we're talking about. I know this this might have been taken out of context, but still, you, you're not getting that. You were never getting that. <sighs> Disgusting.